what it is, you'll notice it has uh, corrugation in the bottom of it, holes in the bottom for any moisture that comes down, gets inside the track, and then drips away from the wall. This is the starter track for your EFA system. Basically, when you put this on, the material on, you want to put it on, you want to hold from the plywood to the foundation line, you want to hold down about a half inch onto your foundation to cover up the joint. Once we have the J-Track on, or the starter track, what we're going to do is we're going to put the Tyvek moisture barrier. On the wall, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that that laps down over the bottom edge onto the outside of that track. This product should be stapled on about every eight At this point, what we're going to do is we've gone over the entire area. We have our window cut out. At this point, what we'll do With this material, will be wrapped inside of the window, wrapped onto the jam. After the window is mounted with the Tyvek on or the moisture barrier, the roll on moisture barrier, the roll out moisture barrier, we're going to put a head flashing on. What this is is a flashing that directly above the window to divert any moisture that comes down the wall, comes out on the flashing and drip away from the window. This is the peel and stick or Forta Flash product. It's a bitchethane product with a peel off backing on it. What we're going to do is we're going to take that. That will go directly on the window flange to the Tyvek. And what that is is we completely seal that.
Then we take the two sides, making sure that the product is completely over the window flange, the nailing flange, and completely out onto the Tyvek area. And finally, over the head flashing. Now we'll go directly down on top of the head flashing, which connects the two sides, making sure that that is fastened directly onto the back of the flange, the nailing flange of the moisture of the head flashing, and then completely sealed to this area. At that point, the window is completely sealed. The wall and the window are completely sealed from any moisture intruding. Okay. <laughs> the next step to this process is we're going to mount a back wrap. What this is is a fiberglass mesh. It's a four ounce fiberglass mesh. It comes in a nine and a half inch roll. This is the process of embedding the entire mesh around the styrofoam system once we put it on. What we're going to do is we're going to fasten the fiberglass mesh to the wall system that will actually be behind the styrofoam. The process is easily done like this with a staple gun. The mesh is just fastened right directly to the wall area. Once that process is complete, what that is is that gives us the ability to have the mesh back wrapped behind the foam system as we complete the system. Next, we'll apply the foam. What the foam is, the styrofoam, it's an EPS board, expanded polystyrene. The minimum thickness for an EFA system is three quarters of an inch. This is one inch styrofoam. Uh, the expanded polystyrene comes in two by four sheets. It's a cured foam. Basically, it needs to be cured in the factory before it's cut for an EFA system. Uh, not any foam will uh, match the system, and so it needs to be a cured foam. As we attach the foam, we'll use a mechanical fastener. What this is is a Wind Devil fastener. It's a two-inch fastener with a non-rusting uh, screw device, a zinc or galvanized screw. This will be placed exactly through the foam. The fastener then holds the foam on. Let me show you the manner that that's done in. We take the styrofoam and slip it down into the starter track. in a fashion like that. And as you notice, I just pre-set the fasteners in this foam. A fastener basically goes every square foot. So we've got a fastener in this particular board. There will be fasteners along the edge, and then every foot, basically around every square foot of the board. As we put the fasteners in, if you'll notice, we take the fastener just beyond the face of the foam. So there's actually a small indentation so the fastener does not stick upon the face of the foam. Slide that into place. And another thing that we want to watch as we put the foam in uh, place, we want to make sure that the gaps are fairly tight when we put that together. One thing you want to be careful of is when you put the fastener in, don't run it too far inside. If you've got it in that far, that causes some problems. As you put the base coat over the top, that will have a tendency to weep back and cause a bulge. You'll see that in the finish. So you want to make sure that fastener is just beyond the face of the foam. So when we rasp this down, that your rasp won't hit that fastener. 
as we cut the styrofoam, which you'll notice too, and we want to make sure that we try to offset construction joints. It's a good common construction practice to offset joints everywhere possible, which we want to do on this. And if you'll notice in the styrofoam, we do not have a joint directly on the window corner. What we've done is L cut the window to be able to put the styrofoam in. If we put that in place, that will offset our joint here. As we <clears throat> work around the window, what we're doing with the styrofoam is we're holding back away from the window frame a gap of 3 8 to 1 half inch between the window frame and the styrofoam. And this will be for a sealant purpose a little later. We'll show you. Another thing you want to watch out and be careful for too is you put the styrofoam on. Once you go back and fill your gaps and cracks, you find a spongy, uh, spongy spot in the foam where the foam is actually loose or bulging. Don't be afraid to go back and put another fastener in those two areas. Be able to seal that down to make that solid on the wall. You want to make sure that the styrofoam is solid everywhere on the wall. If not, you'll have loose spots, which we'll call bulging and unsightly spots at later times. 